Hi Warriors, this is Jalen, my legal warrior. And today's segment is going to be about child custody evaluators. So why would somebody want a child custody and visitation evaluator? Well, the court might have a difficult time in ordering a custody and visitation order that they believe would be in the best interest of the child without further testimony or evidence before it, or the, one of the parties believe that there's just not enough evidence to support the request of the other party or even the recommendation from Family Court Services Mediation, for example, and they need an expert on hand because it's such a complex case. And these are cases where the other parents just do not get along. They've gone through co-parenting classes. They are using electronic means to handle non-emergency communications. And they just do not get along. Those are the parents that absolutely need some form of therapy or mental health professional help so that they are able to be more child-centered leave the action of the other parent in the past or just do not let it affect them. That's very difficult. So a child custody evaluator comes in and investigates. They interview the parents, the children, and any other supplemental information that they need, like child welfare services information or even the recommendation from the family court services mediation. Your current court orders is something else that they could go ahead and uh, review. Any police records, the children's educational records, health records, they do a very comprehensive review of your child custody matter. This is expensive. It costs thousands of dollars to have a child custody evaluator be in your case. So it's very important to have one if you and the other parent just do not get along. It's very complex and you have the funds to hire a child custody evaluator. And sometimes you might have to bear that cost solely because you are the breadwinner or you're the one that makes significantly more money than the other person or you're the one who's requesting it. And if you're requesting it, then the court's not going to need the other party to contribute to that cost unless the court thinks that this evaluator can be paid by both parties. So let's take a look at what family code section actually allows parents to request a child custody evaluator. And I will note though, before we get to that, is that the court on its own motion can make that request. So if neither party has requested it, but the court feels with the information that it has before it, there's just not enough information for it to make a custody order, it can on its own motion request for a child custody and visitation expert and also to have both of the parties equally share in that cost. All right, so let's take a look at Family Code Section 3111. So in a contested proceeding involving child custody and visitation, the court may appoint a child custody evaluator to conduct a child custody evaluation in cases where the court determines it's in the best interest of the child. This evaluation has to be conducted in accordance to standards as adopted by the Judicial Council. If directed by the court, the court-appointed child custody evaluator must file a written confidential report on the evaluation and at least 10 days before the hearing on child custody and visitation, that report has to be filed with the court in which the custody hearing will be conducted and served on the party's attorneys and any other counsel appointed for the child. A child custody evaluation investigation assessment that results in a report can be considered by the court only if it's a, a only if it is conducted in accordance with the requirements set forth in the standards adopted by the Judicial Council. However, this does not preclude the consideration of a child custody evaluation report that contains non-substantive or inconsequential errors or both. So this report has to remain confidential and that's essentially what 
3111B is stating is that it has to remain confidential and only be disseminated as provided um, under the Welfare and Institutions Code or by agreement between you and the other parent as well as a way of a court order. So the report may be received in evidence on stipulation of all interested parties and is competent evidence as to all matters contained in the report. If the court determines that an unwarranted disclosure of a written confidential report has been made, the court may impose monetary sanctions. So they might actually financially penalize you, make you pay thousands of dollars for wrongfully disseminating the report that is written by the expert. The sanction shall be an amount sufficient to deter reputation of the conduct and may include reasonable attorney's fees or both, unless the court finds that the disclosing party acted with substantial justification or that the other circumstances make the imposition of the sanction unjust. The courts cannot impose a sanction pursuant to this section that imposes an unreasonable financial burden on the party against whom the sanction is imposed. So if there is an absolute reason why this was disseminated, for example, it's part of a child welfare services investigation, the court might let that go. But you need to check with your competent attorney before doing anything like that. And it's always best to just have the agreement of the other party or court order to allow that dissemination before just deciding that on your own. Because you don't want to be sanctioned by the court. Doesn't look good for you at the present hearing or any future hearings before the judge. So that's Family Code Section 3011. Now, let's review Evidence Code Section 730. So you've probably heard the terminology 730 child custody evaluator. It's additional evidence that the court can use in order to make a determination as to what's in the best interest of the child or whether the request by other par the other parent would be detrimental to the child. And so the court can state that when it appears to the court any time before during a trial of an action, that expert witnesses or expert evidence is or may be required by the court or any party on its own motion or a motion by any party and they can appoint one or more experts to investigate, to render a report as may be ordered by the court and to testify as an expert at the trial of the action relative to the fact or matters to which the expert evidence is or may be required. The court may fix the compensation for these services rendered by any person appointed under this section in addition to any service as a witness as the amount seems reasonable to the court. Nothing in this section be construed to permit a person to perform any act for which a license is required unless the person holds the appropriate license to lawfully perform that act. So essentially the court can appoint the expert witness on its own motion whereas under family code section 31111 it also can appoint a child custody evaluator and those child custody evaluator has to meet certain standards in order for it to qualify as one and the report can come into evidence by way of court order or a stipulation amongst the parties. So the court can use either code sections, usually they're used in combination with the other. All right, Warriors, thank you in advance for your subscription and thank you for sharing our video. There's a lot of misinformation out there, especially during COVID-19, it's information overload and it's what's correct, what's not correct, especially with all of these changes that are happening and our videos provides only quality information accurate to date and today's video and segment about child custody evaluators can be something that you and the other parent can look into right now, especially if there is a lot of um, dispute or friction about what your custody and visitation should look like moving forward. I mean, we're not going to be living uh, in quarantine forever, but there's going to be a lot of adjustments. And if the two of you are not on the same page or are unable to effectively co-parent and communicate, then you need an expert. A child custody evaluator 
is probably the best thing that you can do, especially if you and the other party are going to go in the direction of litigating child custody and visitation through COVID-19. And as we pass through COVID-19, when the courts do in fact open at some time in the future. And so this is a great way to get a head start on it because now this evaluator can come in right now and this would prevent further delay for your child custody and visitation hearing because they need time to prepare their report, investigate, to write the report, share that information between the all parties and your respective attorneys. So why not take the time where you are required to stay at home and get a head start on a child custody and visitation evaluation. All right, thank you warriors. We hope that you are well and that you are staying safe. Thanks.